Hey folks, Kiltman here. Kiltman sporting the rather resplendent Rob Roy McGregor tartan. In fact, this is the hunting McGregor tartan, a variation on the traditional McGregor. And it's uh, resplendent and gorgeous and uh, nice and warm too, which is just as well because you see before you a kilt man in a kilt, but not in his customary vest. Why? Because it's freezing bloody cold. That's why. Yes, I know. Kiltman doesn't feel the cold. As a rule, he doesn't. Outside, the snow and the ice. Best. Kilt. No worries. However, it's warmer outside than it is inside Kilty Castle at the moment because our boiler's broken down. No heating. No. None. And it hasn't been since ooh, one, two, three, three days now. And it won't even get looked at for another two days. <sighs> These things are sent to try us. Which is okay for the, the husky dog you just saw behind us there. With their extra layers of fur. You know, built for Siberian wastes. The tundra. The snow and the ice. It's alright for her. But no, not for us. So anyway, anyway. Roxy, get your head out of the bowl. Fucking dogs got to interrupt now as well. Anyway, why have um, I've summoned you here on this particular um, video is because well, not movies, not movie music, no masks, no merchandise. This is actually a bit of a um, current affairs. Don't worry, this will not happen often. But this is a story which has come to light. Uh, it's a local story, but it's kind of gone global. It's gone viral, and. Uh, I love it. What it is, a lot of you may have seen the footage of this. In the, uh, the Wavy Tree Technology Park, there is a brand new hotel complex been built, a travel lodge. It, it took a while building it. Apparently, I think it was an old office accommodation block, and it's been converted into this. <laughs> I was going to say luxury then, but if you've been to Travel Lodge, you'll know it ain't luxury. And <laughs> the other day, this guy commandeered his digger, you know, one of those like you know, a dozer type thing with a big bucket on the front you know a digger thing and uh, in front of all his his fluorescent garbed friends with their hard hats on he drove up the front steps through the glass doors of the, of the foyer into the hotel and destroyed the entire foyer taking out windows, desks, lights walls, you name it all caught on camera because that new modern trend of everyone, you know, when, when a disaster happens or when someone is in, someone's lying on the on the ground and needs help, what's the first thing people do? You get your phone out and film. Just film it. Yeah, that's what you do. A plane crashes. Don't rush rush to assist anyone. Film it. Someone's being eaten by a shark. Film it. You know, it's what we do now. This it's a natural instinct. You know, this is how the human being has now evolved. You know, like Wally, we're gonna have fat thumbs from you know our games controllers, and we're gonna instead of being gunfighters, quick on the draw, pulling, pulling out a six shooter. No, it's a phone. I've got my phone and I'm recording. You know, but you want to see the footage of this? And uh, well, there she goes. There she goes, having caused damage and bedlam every room she's been in. Uh, this guy causes complete chaos. They're all shouting at him. John, John, stop it. John, what are you doing? You're going to break someone's leg. John, it's live. When they say it's live, they mean the hotel, there's no one staying in it yet. It's about, it was about to be handed over to Travel Lodge to be opened. And this guy went in and just laid waste to it. Took it down, basically. But when they say it's live, there's all cables coming down. And you can see in the footage, it's shorting out. There's all sparks and stuff. And he's turning them around inside the foyer. He's going through that wall, going through that wall, taking the desk up. And you're thinking, has this guy gone mad? What's going on? Get him out. Get him out of there. Do you know the story behind this? I shall tell you. This guy, and by the sound of him, he's a cockney, the guy who's commandeered this, uh, this digger. It's his digger. His, he helped build that hotel. He's been owed money. He's what he's a subcontractor. Travelodge obviously got this firm in to build the place, renovate it, and 
as you people in the, in the building industry will know, you know, you're going to have one guy in charge of that, that he's going to subcontract and subcontract and subcontract and somewhere right down this endless chain of pure, you know, you know, poor blue collar workers, you've got this guy, he's gone in and done his job. And since before Christmas, he's been waiting to be paid. He was left penniless over Christmas with a wife and with kids and he was promised his wage, six, only 600 quid. He was promised that, promised and promised. They never gave it to him. Finally, I think Saturday just gone. We're now on a Tuesday. Saturday just gone, he was promised you're gonna get your pay. And once again, they reneged on it. So understandably, the, well, fuck you then. I've wasted my time building this for you. Well, fuck you, I'm gonna take it down again. You haven't, you haven't delivered on your side of the deal. I build it, you pay me. I built it, you haven't paid me. And I've given you every chance under the sun. I went through Christmas penniless because of you. Droves, drives in, takes it down. A lot of these people are telling, John, stop, John, John. But a lot of them are cheering him on, giving it loads. He eventually comes out and he trundles down the steps in his digger. And he then begins to sort of do a cartwheel <laughs> to cheers. And it, not a cartwheel, a pirouette, you know. And then heads off in the direction of the car park where lots of cars are parked. So, of course, a lot of people then realise, oh, shit, <laughs> he could be going for the cars. So they leap onto the back of this digger. They get the air, uh, the housing up, and they start trying to pull the, uh, the fuel cables out to stop this thing in motion. And um, on radio today, on uh, BBC Radio 2, on the Jeremy Vine show, one of the guys who pulled the cables out was actually being interviewed, and, uh, and he said, you know, I've got every sympathy for this guy, you know, but we didn't know where he was gonna go next, so I have to, we have to stop him. And like, the guy in the digger is a cockney. This guy was, you know, a pure Lancastrian, you know, he's pure broad Lancashire accent, you know, and he's like, they pulled the cables out and stopped it. Incidentally, when they leap on the back, he begins to spin this little rig about to try and shake them off. But at the end of it, he gets out the cab. People are shaking his hand, congratulating him. And this is all Liverpool. It, it, a lot of Scousers are there too, who are loving this because it's a big one of them to authority. You know, they all know the story, the backstory. And this guy, he's a... Um, <laughs> at the time of me recording this, they haven't caught him yet because apparently he did a runner. Literally, he gave it toes, and he hasn't been seen since. Um, but once this broke news, and, and that video, and there's several different videos of it, but the big one, that's about 20 minutes, it's gone viral, and it's it's become, it's become a bit of a superstar, a bit of a, a Robin Hood, and I'm playing Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, delicately behind this video. And uh, the score by Michael Kamen, awesome score. I have covered it before. But I thought it kind of appropriate. This guy, you know, the underdog, fights against a tyrannical authority who have basically fleeced him and robbed him over Christmas. Now, once this broke news, a huge sort of uh, online campaign struck up to give him his money. And earlier on today, I heard that it reached, he was owed £600, it had reached over £2,500 already. So, you know, he's caused thousands of pounds worth of damage to this hotel for you. But, uh, and you know, there's obviously arguments for and against this sort of behavior. He has broken the law, but did not his bosses break the law initially and then continually break the law by not paying him. So there's a thing in the building industry about people not getting paid and it's always the sub 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 contractors the ones at the top of the chain get paid the next ones get paid it's the guys at the bottom the ones who actually do the fucking digging the ones who do all the actual building the ones who do all the, the leg work and the actual labor they're the ones who don't get paid who have to wait and wait and wait fuck that so the policy that these guys have now and apparently it's quite it's quite a common thing if i built it and you don't pay me i'm going to go in and unbuild it and that's what he did he took down what he put up. 
and fucking hell. I salute you, sir. I definitely salute you. I'm on his side. There is people shouting. There's people in there. There's people, because the, the hotel, it's not open yet. But there are people saying, there's people inside. And obviously, if you see the footage, he could bring down the ceiling above him. And if there are people above there, that, that's gonna come crashing down. So I would say a time and a place. He picked the right place, but possibly not the right time. But even so, you know, in a moment of, is it madness? He's obviously reached boiling point. This has built up and up and up since before Christmas. So we've got weeks worth and he's not been paid. Folks, that ain't fair, that ain't fair. You put the boot on the other foot, right? So imagine imagine if he'd said to you know, his, the one who, who contracts him to go and do the work, okay, I'll do it, yeah. It's gonna cost 600 quid, but I want paying up front. Well, they're not gonna pay him up front, are they? And you know why? Because they're afraid that he won't do the job, that he'll renege on his part of the deal. He'll be a cowboy, he'll leave it half finished, and he'll just fuck off. Where's that? Where's the difference in the fact that he's gone and done his job and then they have not paid him? No, the ones who are in the wrong are them. So, mate, as far as I'm concerned, you're a goddamn hero. You're a modern day Robin Hood. <laughs> You'll probably be arrested. <laughs> But I would struggle to think that they're going to actually charge this guy. I mean, whoever was in that building, and there's no evidence that anyone was, just people saying, there's people in there. It's going to be other workers. There'll be no staff from the hotel that are going to be in there. There's no, certainly no guests are going to be in there. But, you know, you drove a man to breaking point. This is what, what's that, um, oh, what's his name? Falling down. Uh, Michael Douglas. You know, you've driven a working Joe to sort of beyond the point of breaking. What do you expect him to do? You know, I love it, I love it. If you guys, I mean, obviously I can't, I can't link to the footage, you know, you, but it isn't hard to find and it's great. And it goes on for quite some time as well. <laughs> he's, he's having a right old time at tearing up the place. There's an old um, 70s TV horror movie called Killdozer with Clint Walker. And it's about this construction crew on this island and like, I think it's a lightning bolt hits this uh, this big JCB bulldozer type of thing. And it sparks into a life of its own and becomes Killdozer. It starts killing all the construction workers. <laughs> Had they got the soundtrack to that film, I would have been playing that. But, you know, I mean, someone did say, look, he, he behind the wheel of that, that's, that's a homicidal machine. You know, that, that could go through buildings. You could kill anyone with that. And like, yeah, but he didn't. He didn't hurt anyone, you know. He just took down the thing that he'd erected in the first place. And I think he had every right to do so. So, I don't even know his name, but, uh, you know. <laughs> Strength and honour, my friend. Strength and honour. You know, stick it to the man. Because they're all fucking bastards, all of them. And any, any of you, if figures of all, positions of authority, boss men out there, you know, you know you're bastards too. Don't fucking deny it. Don't lie to Kilt Man, because I know what you're all like. I know what the hierarchy's like. You know, I've, I've been on the receiving end all my sobbing life. So to see that take place, hurrah, I say hurrah. He's a champion. Honestly, try and get all that footage. It's well worth it. This guy is a, he's a superstar. You watch, he's gonna be on reality TV soon. He'll have his own fucking TV show. You know, and, and in the end, we're all gonna fucking hate him because he'll be boring as hell. But, you know, this is his moment of fighting back. And come on, let's do it. So let's, let's just, in his, uh, in honor. Let's try and turn this a little bit. Trying to find the main theme, but you know what? I think the best way of doing it is going to be 
I do apologize about this, folks. Here we go. This is in, in his honor. D Digger Man, he's called Digger Man. Shattering glass everywhere. You are Robin Hood, my friend. Only you didn't rob anyone. People were saying he could have just taken the digger. He was owed 600 quid. He's caused thousands and delayed the opening of the hotel. Travel lodge. Did I say that for real? Apparently, there's already been like people putting stuff on like in travel blogs saying, oh, don't stay at that, that travel lodge in a wavy tree. It's, like, uh, it's, got, it's got an open air for you. It's dead drafty, there's rubble everywhere. It's cold. There's no front to it. <laughs> it's noisy. Digger man, wherever you are, this is for you, man. This is for you. There'll be merch soon. T-shirts with like that big digger thing on the front. Video games of it. Trying to stop the digger. Spinning around. Sending sight form and flying. <laughs> there we go, folks. I just thought I'd, I'd share that little story with you because I, I don't follow the news. I don't really care about you know stuff. You know, real life. We all live real life, which is why I choose to fucking try to escape it most of the time, into the land of whiskey, the land of movies, the land of Kiltman's fantasy zone. You know. That's how I live my life. Paying the bills, doing the daily grind, the rat race. Yeah. Whatever you believe in, evolution, God, whatever, whatever. Did God put us on this planet to go and work nine to five just to be able to put food on the table? No. Was, was that his lofty plan for mankind? Bullshit. Did evolution structure us so that we had to get up at a certain time every day? and go and sit behind a desk for X amount of hours, and then to go and, you know, wait for your, your wage at the end of the month or the end of the week, and budget accordingly because, you know, you don't get a fucking pay rise. So you have to get up to go to work, to feed the family. Oh, it's... What is going on? It is a fiasco. A great big fiasco. Kiltman speaks the truth. He tells it like it is. And uh, he doesn't like what he sees half the time. But occasionally something comes along that I have, just have to stand up and applaud and salute. And dig a man. You got it, boy. You got it. You're part of the Kilty clan. An honorary member. <laughs> Folks, I'm going to see you all very soon. So keep it real. Keep it Celtic. Keep it kilted. And, you know, don't take it from the man, you know. Fight back whenever you can. I'm gonna see y'all later. John, you've made your point, John. John, stop the digger, John. <laughs> right on, John. <laughs>